Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and in this presentation we are continue by learning how to use Fatlino and in particular we are going to see some exercises about to control the light of our intelligent house, particularly the bedroom. So this is the outline of the presentation. I will briefly introduce the electronics of the bedroom and then we will move into three exercises. Uh, one for detecting the motion and controlling the light, another one by detecting the ambient light and also controlling the light and a final exercise in order to do some kind of automatic light control by using both, uh, in this case, conditions, the motion and the ambient light. So these are uh, uh, the electronics we use for a, for a bedroom are uh, uh, an LED sensor, uh, a mic, a PR sensor, a servo and also the RGB LED strip. They are connected as they are proposed here in this table and uh, remember that the idea of the bedroom, the main goal is to save energy by controlling the light of the bedroom by detecting the presence of a person using the PR sensor or detecting the presence of the ambient light using the LED, LDR. Sorry. Uh, in particular, in this presentation, we're not going to use the mic, neither the, the servo. Okay? And also, it's uh, also important to, to remember that uh, when we use an ESP32 board, these will be the pins that we will use for our um, in this case electronics, but if we put on top of it uh, an Arduino sensor shield, these pins will be mapped into these signal names here as you can see, okay? And these are the names we use in our Fafelino code. Indeed, this is, this is uh, the circuit that we are proposing for, for the electronics for the bedroom. All of them are connected here in this part of the, uh, of the sensor shield, besides the LED strip which is connected here to pin 8. And this is the equivalent Tinkercad circuit uh, for our simulations in which we use also an, uh, the LED strip, uh, also the LDR, the PR sensor and the servo. This is all, all these are the standard electronics we use, but we don't have a mic in, uh, in Tinkercad and for that we use or simulate or emulate the mic with using a, a potentiometer so we can vary the, the position of the wiper. Okay. So let's start by uh, describing the first example here. Um, the idea is to detect the motion using the PR sensor. Uh, so when the, the sensor detects the presence of a person, it will turn on the light. And for that we have, or we use using this simple code here in, uh, in Fatelino, in which if the sensor, which is connected to pin A0, detects the presence of, uh, of a person, then we'll turn the lights on using the yellow color in this case. And if not, then it will turn them off. Okay, this is the code. You can see here the code that we have generated using uh, Arduino ID. And this is, uh, well, actually it has been generated using Fatalino, but this is the Arduino code. And we can see that we are using uh, a NeoPixel library, which is made uh, by Adafruit. And this uh, library here defines a type of object that we can declare here as this variable here. It's a type of Adafruit underscore NeoPixel and it requires to indicate the number of pixels that we have, in this case seven, and the pin where it's connected to and the frequency we want to connect uh, to, the, the, to, the, to this LED strip. Uh, then we have a couple of functions that we have uh, created which are to clear all the pixels or to write individually all the pixels. Um, but since the complex or the code is a little bit complex here, we don't show them. And here we use uh, the init instruction in order to uh, initialize the LED strip. This is uh, required by the, the new pixel library. And also we set the brightness of the pixels to somehow a 10% of the brightness of the overall brightness of the pixels. And here we have the actual main code that we are implemented here, which is uh, to read from the, the peer sensor and to, to write uh, the, or to set the LEDs with a specific color. This number here you see here is the actual hexadecimal code that we use for displaying the yellow color on all the pixels. And this is in order to display the black color to switch them off. So let's see a live demo, okay? In this live demo, uh, we have uh, let me, yeah we have the uh, RGB LED strip and we have a peer sensor. Let me start uh, the simulation, and in this case, if I click here on the peer sensor, this represents the person, and if it generates, if I generate a motion, let me do it. 
you see that the peer sensor detects the presence, the motion, and the LED was turned on. And after some time, the peer sensor will stop detecting the presence of the person, and then in that case, the, the, the sensor will, or the, the LED will turn off, okay? Since, uh, it, yeah, it seems that the uh, simulation is a little bit slow because maybe the server is busy, a little bit busy, then it might take a little bit more time to uh, this sensor to uh, turn off, but it will, okay, as, as a real sensor. Actually, real PR sensors also behave in this way, okay? So, you can, you can try that at home. We are going to continue with the, with the simulation, with the, with the presentation, sorry. So, we'll stop the simulation. So, now let's move to the next uh, exercise in which the idea is that we want to detect the presence of the ambient light using an LDR sensor, so if we cover uh, the sensor with our hand then it will be measuring, let's say, no light and that will produce a value below 800 and that will make the lights to turn on and if we uncover the, the sensor then the lights will turn off. So let me uh, do uh, this or simulate, run this, this simulation as before here, uh, here this is, uh, the LEDs are on, that means that there's no light exactly, so the sensor was here, but if we move this with this slider, this is no light and this means light, so with the slider uh, means that there's light in the ambient, so we don't need the, the actual uh, light, so that's why they're off, but if we cover it with our hand, we simulate that by that, we shift it and then the LEDs will turn on. And then in the last example, the idea is to implement an automatic light control. Okay, so the idea here is that the LEDs should be only on when there's no ambient light and there's a sensor inside, so there's motion in the room. Otherwise, the lights should be off. And in this case, uh, also, uh, because we don't want to be setting off and off and off this, the LEDs, we want to set all only when there, there are changes on the input. So, for that, we use a state machine. This is something we explained before, okay? And this is the minimum code I could figure out in which uh, we use two global variables to control the status of our machine. Uh, one for controlling the, the presence of the person with the movement status variable, and the other, the other one to control the fact that we have an ambient light or not, yeah, with the ambient light status uh, variable here. So here, if, I mean, if the signal is above 800, that means that we have light, have ambient light, and if we have an ambient light and the status was false, as it is at the beginning, and we, due to this negation, this condition will become true and the status signal will become true, and it's off. That's because we have light. At any time we have light and, um, and this was off, then that will, we will execute this instruction. But if we have no light and here, then we set the status to false and then here we detect the presence of a person and if there was no one there before, then we turn on the lights but immediately we, the movement status will, turn, will, will be set to true, so that means that we will, even there's a person inside, we will not be executing this instruction, so that we are not setting and forcing the lights to be yellow and yellow and yellow. They are already yellow, we need to execute this instruction just once. And if this condition becomes true, then we will turn off the lights. So let's see how this works on a real example, I mean on, on, on a simulated example. So let's, uh, let's start the simulation. Right now, if there's light, uh, the, the, the lights are on, uh, off, sorry, ambient light, they're, they're off. If there's no ambient light, but there's no one there, the lights still are off, but if someone enters into the room, then the lights turn on. Yeah, and after some time, here you see, yeah, after some time, the lights automatically turn off. This is how the PR sensor works. Okay, it seems like now another movement, so you move your hand and after some time, and of course if there's light, as we saw before, and there's someone inside, the sensor detects the presence but the, the lights are not turned on. Okay, so this is the expected behavior. Okay.
and this is everything we, we need to explain about how to uh, basically control the light of our bedroom with Fatalino. Thank you very much.